one of the commenters asked the question as to how you can use the standard curve to actually help you calculate the concentration of an unknown sample if you've gotten that sample's absorbance. So what I want to teach you today is how to, again, generate the standard curve and then use that standard curve to get your concentration for your unknown. So the first part of this tutorial is going to be relatively similar to what you've already seen. That is the generation of our standard curve. Um, and I'm actually going to give us a standard curve graph that will fit neatly in this page that will allow us to type in any values here for concentration and absorbance. And at the end of all of this, attain the concentration of our unknown sample. Okay? So what I've done so far is just given us uh, three columns, a column for our tube numbers, one through five, which will contain a serial dilution where our samples have decreasing concentrations in milligrams per milliliter of protein and then the absorbances that we obtain for each of those samples when we place them in the spectrophotometer. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my chart to display. So I'm going to click on the ribbon, charts, scatter, and marked scatter. Now Excel is going to basically dictate that it wants a certain type of chart with um, certain values. And it already names values and then uses select data. I don't want that, so what I'm going to do is first delete the legend because I don't need the legend. And then I'm actually going to right click and choose uh, select data for my chart. I'm going to remove all of the series that the chart has already populated and I'm going to add a new series where I'm going to define the X and Y values. I don't really care about the name of the series or anything like that at this point. I just want the correct X and Y values and we'll label our axes here in a little bit. So I'm going to click here on this tab for X values and for my X values I want it to be B2 through B6. So I'm going to select B2 to B6 I click this tab again to bring me back into my chart options for my series data. For my Y values, I'm going to select C2 to C6. Okay, so that's going to give us the correct values. I'm going to click OK. And nothing's really changed here. Now, a couple of things we need to do. For those of you who've listened to some of my previous presentations, you know I really don't care for grid lines. So I'm going to actually format grid lines by right clicking and choosing format grid lines and I'm going to select no line and that removes the grid lines. Now to further clean up my chart what I'm going to need to do is define minimum values for each of my axes and then I'm going to need to give titles to the chart and then the axes. So I'm going to start by right clicking on my y-axis and choosing format axis and I'm going to select scale. For the minimum value, I'm going to type in 0. Even though it already was listed as 0.0, .0 if this is checked marked, it's going to auto-correct the scale. And we don't want that. We want our minimum value to be 0 because you can't have less than 0 absorbance and you can't have less than 0 milligrams per milliliter. So I'll click OK. And I'm going to do the exact same thing here on my x-axis. Right-click, Format Axis, and then type 0 to remove that check mark. Click OK. Now I'm going to go to chart layout in the ribbon and I'm going to add a title, title above the chart, and it's going to be concentration versus absorbance. Then for my axis titles, horizontal axis, my title below the axis is going to be concentration in milligrams per milliliter and then I'm going to again choose axis titles, vertical axis title and I'll do rotated title and this is going to be absorbance. Okay, so right now I've got a chart that will display the points as I plug them in here. So just to try this I'm going to type in a serial dilution so I'm going to start at 10 milligrams per milliliter and dilute it by half each time. And then I'm going to type in random absorbance values. And I'll do something a little less than just straight linear. Uh, let's do 6 and then 0 0.01. Okay, so there are my values. And I can stretch my chart out a little bit if I want to here. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the data point and I'm going to right click and I'm going to do add trend line. So that gives me a linear trend line which is exactly what I want. I'm going to format the line. I'm actually going to make it red so it's a little more pronounced and I'm going to click on weight and arrows and I'm going to increase the weight to 1.5 just to give it a little more heft. So there we go. So this is nothing new to any of you who have watched my previous video on how to make a standard curve. Now what I want to do actually is I want to take this standard curve and I want to use it to help me calculate the concentration of an unknown sample. So let's say that I have an unknown absorbance and I want to calculate the unknown concentration. So let me bold these real quick. Okay, so this is where I would type in my unknown absorbance. So if I put my unknown tube into the spectrophotometer and it gave me some absorbance, that would give me that value. And I want this to use this information to then calculate the concentration based off of that absorbance. So we're going to use a formula in this set of cells and it's called trend. It basically uses a set of data, takes a trend line off of that set of data and calculates a new value based on a value you provide. So I'm going to put open parentheses and my first set of values are going to be my x values, comma, then my y axis values, then my known x will be this cell here to the right of my unknown absorbance. So this is where I'm plugging in my unknown absorbance and I will close my parentheses. Now, it's a little confusing because in the formula it said known y's for these values and known x's. That's actually backwards of what it should be. You should put your x values here and your y values here because that's how we did them up here. Okay, So I'm going to hit enter. Now notice that it gives me a value error here. That's because I have nothing in this cell right now. So if you don't want it to display that, what you actually can do is at the beginning of this add what's known as if error. So that basically tells Excel that if an error is achieved when performing this formula inside of the parentheses, the output will then be whatever you put after this comma. So for that I'm going to put two empty quotations. And that now gives me nothing. But the cool thing is now if I type in a value for my unknown absorbance, let's say 0.25, it gives me an output in for my unknown concentration in milligrams per milliliter. So to clean this up finally, let's say that I only want to go out to a few decimal places. I'm just going to choose format cells. And for my number, I'm going to do two decimal places and choose OK. And voila, I now have an unknown concentration based off of the absorbance I obtained for my unknown sample. So just to show you that this always works, I'm going to actually delete all the values. And I'm going to type in a new serial dilution with new absorbance values. one, three, and how about 0 0.08. Okay, so I've got my trend line, my data points, and then for my unknown absorbance, let's say I pick something between 2.5 and 5, so I'll pick um, 0 0.18 and 3.73, which happens to be between 5 and 2.5. All right, so I'm going to delete all these values except for the formula, and I'm going to leave this as this particular type of file. So that's how you do it.